welcome to Zico and Z on anything but with me. And uh, like I said, Kuma has many faces and uh, I'm here to expose another one, a, a better one rather, you know. Finally. Uh, finally, yes. And uh, he's a renowned uh, corporate etiquette trainer. Kuma, you're an etiquette trainer. What, 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 why are you a trainer? It's called corporate etiquette. It is, I work with corporates. They are, they are skilled, they're educated, they're experienced. But I, I, I work on what I call the wrapping paper. See, you, Nilum Hatella, uh, all that. But if you don't know how to eat, to shake hands, to exchange business cards, basic things, I mean, toilet etiquette, uh, people first judge on what you see. I don't know who you are, your qualifications. I judge you on what, you, what I think you are. And when I talk to you, they get to know who you are. So all this judgment is on wrapping paper. So my journey is polishing up that wrapping paper, as I call it. Um, your clients or your trainer, trainees are uh, a wide variety from, uh, from drivers to uh, peons to you know, CEOs to directors of companies and all of that. How do you work around the, the hierarchy? See, it's all, they have different requirements. So I first have a chat with the client and who, who is the group, what is the group? So I adapt my co-training to suit the requirements. If it's a chairman or a you know, CEO, they have different, they, they move at different levels. They perform at different levels. So they need to behave differently. Whereas I work with drivers and peons, it's a different level there again. I'm not being a snob, but so how one adapts and reacts and performs at once designated uh, corporate level. And that's important. Even a peon is important. Branding, personal branding. Uh, your speech at your school, uh, Wesley College, as chief guest at the prize giving uh, was a very inspiring one. You know, you, you had me at t uh, in tears, you know. Um, there, there was a lot uh, that you portrayed the, that day. I mean, you know, you, um, you showed humility uh, by talking about your um, financial Ch challenged uh, childhood. And, and then, then you also showed gratitude, you know, by uh, getting up and going and worshipping your first French teacher. Um, you showed responsibility uh, to those kids about branding, how they are branders, brand ambassadors of their school inside and once you're out. And also you, you mentioned the fact that about possibility, you spoke about possibility, uh, how you need to uh, shine the diamond within you, cut and polish your own diamond within you. Uh, how do you apply this in your training? Everybody who comes to me to my training sessions, I always say we are all, we are all, even we are, when we were born, when we were like one day old, we are a raw, uncut diamond. It's great value and great potential. The more you clean and cut and polish and get faceted, it has more value. So we all have the potential, the possibility. So again, I say beggars, uh, bus drivers, tuk tuk drivers, they, they, they have lost, they, for no fault of theirs, they've got stuck down the line. But we all can go up there. The more you clean and cut and polish is learning, is knowledge, knowing what to do, what not to do, how and how not to do. It's just learn. Look around and talk to people. I I'm still learning. I learn from you. So always you look and learn and look and learn. That's how you clean and, clean and polish yourself. Knowledge. Right. Uh, coming from that speech, uh, I mean, what have you given back to your school or, or the Wesleyites or, or even school leavers for that matter? See, in 2020, I think we still those old values are, are, are hold very good. Uh, gratitude, not to forget your past. I'm not ashamed to say that I had a financially challenged childhood. I, I, I wore borrowed shoes. I wore uh, borrowed clothes. I had uh, two meals a day. I saw an egg once a month. Mm. An egg once a month. You said, hmm. Uh, sugar was on the palm to with the tea. That was sugar. So <clears throat> I have not got wrong in life. I have, I've, I've not got wrong in life. It has made me a stronger person, uh, to more humble, more simple. And these are things that, you know, when you're challenged with, with not having stuff, you, you come out a better person, I think. And gratitude. This is what word is called Kelehi Guna. Uh, old teachers, uh, principals, mother and father, elders. This is a nice thing to be. Mm -hmm. It comes back to you at all times. It always comes back to you. So this, this boy who was financially challenged as a, as a, as a kid, uh, was also knighted by the government of France as a, as a chevalier uh, in the order of arts and letters, right? Yeah, tell us more about it. Yeah, that I think was the best present I got in my for, for, for my fiftieth birthday. 
Oh. Uh, I couldn't have asked anything more than that. That was uh, for my work uh, in propagating the French language and culture in Sri Lanka for the past, I think, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So it was with Bonsoir, which began a long time ago. So I, st I still do a lot of work with Elian Swansea's The Cote, which is the only official recognized uh, organization of its kind in the city of Colombo. So very much. And next year is going to be uh, 35 years since I first went to Paris. I'm writing uh, my book, the story, uh, A Sri Lankan in Paris. Um, things that went wrong, uh, things that were hilarious, the mistakes I made holding a fork and knife like this. I did not know. <laughs> you do not know, you get laughed at, you learn. This whole and now you is... train people how to do that. Exactly. So I am not God's gift to mankind. I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. So you have to learn. Look and not, don't be ashamed to learn. For God's sake, you know, we all learn. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, clearly an amazing reputation as a trainer. Uh, I know this firsthand because you, you have trained my niece as well the quite recently. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, they all have high regard, um, you know, uh, very high regard about your, including, you know, about your training to, you know, all that you do. I'm not an easy trainer. I'm very aggressive. I, I pick them. I, I shock them uh, and open their brains. And so they, it's an eight hour program and they cannot fall asleep and they do not fall but asleep. But they seem to love you. How do you manage that? Because they walk around magic? Singlish. Oh, the Singlish language works. <laughs> so I go into your bloodstream with Singlish and it works very well. And it's a lot of it's stories and you know, life. Just It's about life. What is corporate etiquette? It is being a successful corporate animal performing there. It's about life, for God's sake. Life at your work there. Uh, would you say this? Uh, your training is not only for the corporate sector, but it could be for any individual, you know, from any walk of life? It starts with A-level students who are just about to leave school. They are tomorrow's corporates. They are the brand ambassadors of their old school. Are you training them at the Yes, college? I do. I, I, I work a lot with uh, Sima Sri Lanka. And they send me out to a lot of schools and in fact even universities. I've been to Rohna, to Japura, to Kalania, to Colombo. To... So final year undergraduates are the corporates of tomorrow. And A-level final years are. So I work with St. Peter's College, Westy College, lots of schools. And so that's, that's going. So we teach them, preparing them how to face the corporate world. And one important thing is sexual harassment. Yes. At workplaces, it happens in schools, it happens at homes. So how to protect yourself? especially being a woman, because a guy is always least I know. But a woman has a tag, it's not easy, it's not, it's not funny. So I teach these young girls, even undergraduates, A-levels, girls, you know, and I just give it raw. They need to know this thing. Mm -hmm. We have a, what I call this Asiyanu Sampradaya and we hide everything. You should not do that. You need to get it out. It's, it is protecting them. It's not Valpa. It mm -hmm. is protecting them how to handle these things. Then they know what to do out of innocence. See, our girls are generally naive, innocent, believing. Um, and also out of that comes a lot of danger, a lot of trouble happens. You need to be aware. Cell phones. Mobile phones, bus travel, my God, yes. Camp sex, the phone sex that happens. Boys always, as I say, listen But girls, they are branded for life. You know that, no? Yes, that is true. Um, but uh, what was your most memorable or like something that you can remember from your training you must be having a lots of stories so to i'm a very unorthodox trainer i walk on tables i walk on chairs i i i drink water and i spit on the carpet uh they're showing what to do and what not to do and it shocks them you know how to wash the mouth you know oh. and like they're shocked it's a carpet the carpet absorbs water for god's sake uh, best one was I dress very, very comfortably. So I went to a certain organization. Uh, cotton trousers, shoes, shirt out, and sleeves rolled up. I cannot wear a tie and a jacket. No, I'm, that's not me. I can't do that. Because I, I walk and talk for eight hours. Mm -hmm. So I said, now they're going to start eight, eight, nine o'clock. Uh, I was that. I said, I'm going to go to the house. I said, I'm going to go to the house. I said, I'm going to go to the I, I must give it to you, you're very much you. I uh, I remember walking with you um, to an event or coming out of an event and where we were photographed and um, by a particular well-known, well-reputed uh, TV station and, and uh, they came and asked you what you were wearing. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, you said that. So, um, Chinese New Year, Shangri-La Hotel. Okay, now you're, you're, now you're giving out. 
information, but, a lot of information. No, you tell the button. <laughs> yeah, so he was photographed. So every, and, okay, everybody was branded yeah, clothes. I mean, people, I mean, I... I you I also, right? Yeah. yeah, but I didn't remember what I was wearing, so I said, I don't, I don't remember. And this person Some was very... Some posh name came uh, out. Yeah, you know? very, very, uh, you know, pushy and he wanted to know is this thing. And uh, Kumar tells him that he was wearing a shirt from the pavement. And we all stopped and is looking at him like, you're joking. Uh, I actually thought he was joking. And he says, and this boy looks stunned. So he's like, excuse me, and with his accent and all that, excuse me. And uh, Kumar says, right shirt from the pavement. Which is true. <laughs> and I what is wrong in buying a... shirts from Pamunu in Maharagama? What is wrong in buying shirts from the Peter Kotua, that world, world market place, Palayakat Sarongs? Beautiful. Why are we trapped with these brands? But it you, is, your, it your is work what is you want branding. To be personal branding. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to have a big brand, a posh brand to uh, represent prop. yourself. No, no. My brand is myself. How I talk, how I behave, how I stand, how I do it. This is just just, just things, Props. by the way. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now you're a brand queen. But you don't need to be a brand queen. You are <laughs> a little hateller. So, you know, that's your brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not discussing me. Kumar again. <laughs> okay. You're on the hot seat, not me. <laughs> so it's just, okay, I mean, I don't know. No brands, no, sorry. Just, right. just stuff. Uh, so, where is your uh, career heading at the moment? Is it as a corporate trainer or more of a TV host, or are you into retirement anytime soon? Do I look retirement material? Yeah, my gosh, you look. You, you, should, you look <laughs> like you need to be dropped off at the nearest elders home, Kuma. But anyways. <laughs> so, uh, MCing is a hobby. Uh, TV is a hobby. I'm not off TV totally, by the way. Mm -hmm. But training, yes, because you don't need aid. The more you age, you know more stuff, well, know more stuff, and you're accepted. So I'll be training for as long as I can, and then when I stop, I get into writing. What about the TV career? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so wait and see. Now it closed two weeks ago. No? So we'll come back. Life goes on, so I keep reinventing myself. Right. So you will see a newer you, uh, in a newer anything but or anything. <laughs> but not, <laughs> what not, you know. <laughs> Anything's possible with Kumar. So let's see what he's going to come up with. And uh, with that, we close anything but with me. Um, Kumar, and I, have a, I have a gift, a token of appreciation for being on my show and being my guest today. A frog, I hope, please. <laughs> yep, you read me. That is for you. Oh, wow. That's, that's his face. Yeah, I bought a, I bought a look-alike, Kumar. I bought a look-alike. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Fatter version of you. <laughs> and with that, I thank all of you for watching this show for the last two and a half years. And also for the, to the amazing crew who has been supporting throughout. And uh, especially the management of Pulse for giving me the opportunity to interview uh, yours truly. And, uh, Kumar, they couldn't have chosen a worse person than you, seriously. <laughs> so they found your enemy. <laughs> Do you want to say something to your viewers before yep. we so Thank you very much, everybody. It's been a great journey of two and a half years. Wonderful times, nice times. Thank you to Jani, Thradrigo of Pulse, Sachitra, the entire crew, the team. My guests who willingly came and got harassed like this one. Uh, it was all part of the game, part of the show. So. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To keep up with the Pulse of Sri Lanka, you can subscribe to our channel here. To catch our latest videos, you can click here and here. Keep living.